It's a tough world in California during the Great Depression. Men travel from as far south as Alabama to look for work on the ranches. The migrant workers stay on as long as the job takes, and then they move on. Most of the men travel alone. It's a tough gig. At least the landscape is beautiful here. It has the deep green Salinas River and the majestic Gabalan Mountains. Rabbits gather on the shore of the river, listening intently to approaching footsteps. We're about to meet two workers who have walked across America together. The two men are opposites. George is small and clever, while Lenny is big and strong. Lenny also has an intellectual impairment. He understands very little about the world around him, so George looks out for him. Life isn't easy for George and Lenny. Lenny likes picking up dead mice and keeping them in his pockets to stroke because they're soft. They were run out of town on their last job because Lenny scared a woman by stroking her dress. Lenny can't keep a job and often gets in trouble because he's misunderstood. It's a good thing he has George. The friends have a dream that keeps them going, to own their own ranch one day. Lenny loves hearing about the rabbits that he will care for. George plans to have his own land and be his own boss. Imagine being self-sufficient. No wonder they love talking about their imagined future. After walking for miles and sleeping rough, George and Lenny arrive at a ranch near the town of Soledad. They meet Candy, an elderly ranch worker who lost his hand in a machinery accident many years before. Candy shows them their beds in the bunkhouse and tells them how the other men are unpleasant to Crooks, the stable buck. Why? Because Crooks is African-American and has a crooked back. Do you get the feeling that this will be a tough workplace? When the boss comes in to meet his new employees, George does all the talking. He doesn't want the boss to realise that Lenny has a disability. The boss is suspicious and wonders why George is so interested in getting Lenny a job. Around here, it's unusual to see someone care this much for another person. Once the boss leaves, Candy comes in with his beloved old dog. The poor thing's toothless and arthritic, but Candy loves that dog to the moon and back. Candy's followed by the boss's obnoxious son, Curly. He's a short, angry man who picks fights with other men, especially if they're tall, like Lenny. Better watch out, Lenny. After Curly leaves, his young wife enters the bunkhouse. She and Curly have only been married for a few weeks, and she's already lonely. Being the only woman on the ranch can't be easy. No wonder she's pleased whenever anyone pays attention to her. Lenny thinks she's pretty, but George warns Lenny that he'd better avoid Curly and his wife. Will Lenny heed his warning? Slim, a senior man on the ranch, comes in to meet George and Lenny. Slim chats to another worker named Carlson about the puppies that Slim's dog has just had. Of course, Lenny gets his heart set on having one. Meanwhile, Carlson thinks that Candy should just shoot his old dog and get a puppy instead. Never mind that Candy loves his dog. That evening, we see that Lenny has acquired a puppy from Slim. When George thanks him, Slim gets curious about why George and Lenny travel together. George explains that he knew Lenny's Aunt Clara, who raised Lenny. George took Lenny under his wing after she died. He also tells Slim about what happened at their last job. They fled town because Lenny was wrongly accused of rape. He'd frightened a woman by touching the fabric of her dress. He can't help but touch soft things. Slim agrees with George that Lenny is a good person. At least someone understands. Lenny comes in with his new puppy. 
He loves his dog, but he's a danger to the animal. Why? Well, Lenny can't tell if he's patting a puppy too much or too hard. He just isn't very aware. Poor Lenny. Meanwhile, Carlson has offered to shoot Candy's smelly old dog. No one defends Candy or the dog, so Carlson takes his pistol and leads the dog out. Meanwhile, Candy lays paralysed and heartbroken on his bed. He can't show the men how devastated he is. The men are quiet until a shot rings out into the evening. A ranch labourer called Wit is chatting with George when Crooks comes in. Crooks warns them that Lenny might harm the pups by petting them. When the men go to sort Lenny out, Wit talks about visiting prostitutes in town. He doesn't think highly of women, particularly Curly's wife. Women really are outsiders on the ranch, aren't they? Once Lenny comes back from the pups, he wants George to tell him about their dream. He's never tired of listening. George talks about keeping animals and owning a vegetable garden. Candy wants to get in on this. He has a bit of money saved up. Maybe he could help them. Curly storms in again, bringing trouble with him. He's worried that one of the other men has been playing around with his wife. Is Curly annoyed because he loves her or because he sees her as his property? Lenny doesn't know what's going on and grins innocently at Curly. This enrages Curly and he viciously attacks Lenny. Lenny doesn't fight back because George told him not to. Curly lays into poor Lenny. Then George orders Lenny to fight back. Lenny's scared, but he's a strong man. He grips Curly's hand for a long time, crushing all the bones. Yikes. Does it serve Curly right? It's certainly a reminder of Lenny's strength. When the men take Curly to see a doctor, the scene shifts. We're in the stables where Crook sleeps. He's clearly an intelligent man. He reads a dictionary and a legal book in his spare time. It's now Saturday night and Crooks, Lenny and Candy are left on the ranch alone. The other men are having a big night out. Lenny wanders into the stable room to see the puppies. Crooks values his privacy and isn't pleased to see Lenny. But Lenny isn't like the other white men who exclude Crooks. Lenny has an innocence about him. Crooks tells Lenny about his childhood, and Lenny tells him about the dream of tending to rabbits on a ranch. Candy joins Crooks and Lenny to talk about the dream. There's a moment where Crooks even suggests that maybe he could leave the ranch with them. They're interrupted by Curly's wife. As usual, she's feeling lonely and just wants to talk to someone. But Candy and Crooks both tell her to go away. Do you feel sorry for her? She gets fed up and threatens to get Crooks into trouble. He's probably the only person on the ranch who's treated worse than her. We next see Lenny on Sunday afternoon, cradling his puppy. Sadly, the puppy is dead. Lenny is confused and upset. He doesn't fully understand that he's killed the puppy by over-petting it. It's a sad ending for the puppy and heartbreaking for Lenny. He worries that George won't let him take care of the rabbits in future once he knows that he's accidentally killed his own puppy. When Curly's wife comes into the barn again, he starts talking to her. She's friendly to Lenny, so he tells her about the dream of the rabbits. Gee, he loves those rabbits. You'd think they were real. Curly's wife can relate. She likes to have her soft hair stroked. She even invites Lenny to feel her hair. Just like with the puppy, Lenny doesn't know when to stop. He keeps on stroking Curly's wife's hair until she gets alarmed and wants him to let go. They struggle and she screams. Lenny panics and shakes her. He just wants her to stop yelling. 
Suddenly, her body flops like a fish. Lenny has accidentally broken her neck. Lenny is terrified, so he leaves the body of Curly's wife among the hay, looking very pretty and simple. He tucks the dead puppy under his coat and runs away. Candy finds Curly's wife and tells George. George despairs. All he hopes for now is that his friend Lenny won't get hurt. Candy knows that Curly will make sure Lenny dies for this. When the other men burst into the room, Curly is outraged and vows to seek revenge. Carlson also realises that his gun has been stolen. George hopes that they can find Lenny and hand him over to be locked up. He's still hoping that justice will be done. Is it possible? Curly can't wait to shoot Lenny. George reminds Curly that Lenny wouldn't have known what he was doing. Curly doesn't care about Lenny's disability. There's murder in Curly's eyes. We move away from the ranch to the beautiful Salinas River. The hills are rosy in the sun, and there's a soft breeze. Lenny is out there, waiting for George. He's lost in his thoughts. He imagines his Aunt Clara is in front of him, telling him off for being a nuisance to George. A rabbit hops near Lenny. Lenny imagines that the rabbit is angry at him too. When George finds Lenny, George is calm and gentle. He tells Lenny his favourite story, the story of their dream. He also tells Lenny to take off his hat and look over the river. George can't let the other men hurt Lenny, but there's only one way he can protect him. George stole Carlson's gun. He knows what he must do now. As the other men get closer, George keeps on soothing Lenny with his words. He lifts the gun and pulls the trigger. Lenny's body slumps forward onto the sand, and he lies there without quivering. George doesn't say much. He doesn't correct Carlson when he suggests that Lenny must have been on the loose with his gun. Slim leads George away for a drink and tells him that the deed had to be done. What are we to make of all this? Why didn't George and Lenny try to escape? Is Lenny's death really a compassionate one? Perhaps Steinbeck wanted to show us how people survive in a cruel world. But has the world become a kinder place in the 21st century? Or is true friendship still hard to come by? You certainly don't need to shoot your best mate to prove you love them. Maybe just give them a hug instead. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.